Hi there. Today we're going to go over how to remove an old brick chimney and then how to patch the roof back in over top of it and make it look like it's never been there. A couple things you're going to need. Very simple job. Uh, you'll need a leaf blower to blow it all off when you're done. Uh, you'll need some sledgehammers. Usually just a small sledgehammer. Two pounder is fine. Sometimes you'll need an eight or a ten. <clears throat> Sometimes if it's soft enough you just get away with a wrist of regular old hammer. Um, and then a trash can or something to carry the debris off the roof. You can also throw it but it's just safer to carry it. So. Uh, a couple things as we'll get going, we'll start in. One thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to break the chimney, but instead of breaking it so that it falls onto the roof, we want to kind of break it so it falls within itself. Um, obviously, you don't want all the bricks to fall down. You want to catch those before they go, but this greatly reduces the amount of mesh you have on the roof, which is going to protect your shingles. Uh, if you're on a really steep slope, uh, you can run blankets around or stand on old cushions or things like that on your roof that will kind of protect it. A couple things to note before you start knocking this down. You have to confirm that your chimney is actually dead and not in use. So depending on the part of the country you're in, this is going to vary. Uh, but the big thing is, is you know, a lot of these old chimneys were like old coal burning stoves, so nobody's using those anymore. Um, but you have to go in the basement and actually look to make sure there's any pli pipes plugged into them. It's really common for HVAC guys to run your new furnace through this chimney or your hot water to heater to run through that as well. So you really got to make sure it's completely done. Um, and then if there's an actual fireplace down there underneath that, you've got to make sure your fireplace is dead or bricked over or completely eliminated so it's not going to, you know, start a fire in your house. So that's on you <laughs> to figure that out. Uh, but then once you've confirmed that the chimney is truly not in use anymore, um, taking them out is pretty easy. So I'll show you how that's done. We'll do a little bit of it and then we'll kind of speed it up through and show you the stages. All right, so we're gonna get going on it. Uh, make sure you wear some eye protection. Gloves are also nice as well. Uh, we're gonna start breaking it up. Again, we wanna hit it so it's kind of falling in within itself. So I've got a big hammer here. I'm just gonna kind of loosen it up first. Okay. It's starting to already break up pretty good. So now we're just gonna take the pieces out as gently as possible so we make less mess. Right, now we got most of the brick off. Now we're down to really close to the roof deck. Now every brick chimney is going to have some sort of flashing that's tying it into but the chimney into the roof. And so this is kind of the critical part. You want to be careful. But the reality is you're kind of redoing all these shingles anyway, so it's okay to get a little bit rough with it um, to get it off. But I usually find if you just pry it off with a pry bar, uh, it works a lot better than trying to just keep beating at it with a hammer. So this, this type of flashing 
is called counter flashing. And what's underneath it is called step flashing. So these are individual pieces of flashing that are tying each shingle into it. And then this counter flashing goes over top and covers it up. So it's two pieces of flashing, two types of flashing you'll have to peel up. This type of flashing is like an L and it goes underneath the shingles. Uh, it goes up the wall and underneath the shingles. Okay, so here we are. We got some of the flashing off. You can kind of see here on this side. I've got a little bit left on this side. But now the important part is when you start taking this flashing off, you gotta be careful of the shingles and you just step them back. So the way I do it, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. But the way I do it is I, I just take it back to the nearest seam. So you can see there's, there's where one stopped and started right there. There's another one. It's kind of a stair step pattern. Actually, the other one's like uh, over there. Anyway kind of step them all back make sure you're getting all the nails out careful as you pull them apart if they're really dried they'll start to tear and rip uh, and then you come down here to the bottom um, one thing I want to show you see how this shingle here is the top line goes across and then it actually has been cut down going across so technically we need to replace that shingle so this whole shingle should come off as well okay we finished kind of detailing all the shingles you can see everything stepped up around everything like that so we're pretty much ready to fill the hole now there's a couple things we can do here um, and really the easiest and the best way is to um, cut everything back here to your truss so you can kind of see the trusses right here same thing on the other side cut it back you can end it there you can scab on a little piece of wood and screw it on but that's not the best um, but yeah just just uh, add a board this way and then measure your sheeting and set the sheeting on there. So I'll show you a completed picture before I do it. Uh, it was just measuring and cutting wood. Um, fairly simple. And you can see there's the chimney. Again, everything's set right here. Um, everything's everything's knocked below the roof deck. I mean, there's just only about an inch here and difference between here and here, but it's really all we need. Um, it's just not hurting anything. And the client's actually going to take the chimney down all the way through the house so they can reclaim some space in their house. Um, so this is actually all going to disappear in a little bit. One thing you can do too, if you want to avoid drafts or things like that, um, if you do have some holes down below, like sometimes there's an old um, HVAC line or something that plugged into it, is you can actually stuff this with a, like a big rag or you could cap it with a piece of wood or something or like a bat of insulation just to keep air from going in and out of it. There's really no really need to, but you can if you want to, uh, depending on your situation. So yeah, that's pretty it. So I will show you once the wood's down, and then we'll do our underlayment over top of that and piece the shingles in. All right, you can see we got our plywood piece put in. Fits pretty good, nice and tight. Nail that down. And then the next part is gonna be the underlayment. So this is the black stuff you see over here. We're gonna new piece of this over top of everything. And once that's done, we can start piecing the shingles in back and around. All right, here's another quick close up. You can see we've added in the felt here around it. This is actually synthetic felt, not tar paper, but you can use tar paper as well. Um, yeah, just kind of tack it down around and then start piecing in the shingles. If you want better videos on how to shingle, how to patch in holes, uh, where we like do a closer step-by-step -step how to install shingles, uh, feel free to check out one of our videos. We've got many other videos on this, but um, yeah, so we'll start here at the bottom 
and we'll just slowly just keep working our way up from the bottom up all the way up to the top and then we'll have to put on our ridge cap shingles here across the top and I'll show you another video I'll show you that in a minute all right so here we are we're finally putting it back down um, depends on your area but generally speaking you got to do six nails to a shingle you just start piecing them in and stepping them in uh, you can see there's a color difference here it's just because of the mortar a good rain uh, and these will match pretty close as long as you're matching the same color that was originally down
right, you can see we got all these shingles pieced in. See how they kind of stair step back. Again, last thing we have to do now is do the ridge cap right through here. I'll try to set the camera up so you can see it uh, as we cap it in. This is a little different because there's ridge vent already in the middle and we're not adding ridge vent in today. So there'll be a little step down, but you'll get the idea. All right, we're working on ridge cap. Um, there's a little uh, shape to them. So the wider end, this end, goes is the exposed side. So that's the side that you show. So for us today, you're just gonna do it. And you line it up on the ridge. Normally you snap a line, but because I'm already meeting up, making two ridges meet, I'm gonna kind of do it on the fly. And I've already got an old line, dust line there. It's pretty easy to see. So just tuck them in. And typically you only need to do one nail in each corner. Um, there's a little glue spot on each side. You go one inch in from the edge, inch and a half, and that's where you need to be at. And you want to line the next one about a half inch uh, over the glue line that's on the shingle. So there's a glue line right here. So the next one wants to come and cover it about right there. And then when you're finishing up with the last part, you just cut it down to what you need and you're gonna have two exposed nails. So you'll just have to seal those and you're done. That's it, I'll blow it off and show you when it's all completed. You can see these little gaps here. Um, these will all lay down as that heats up, the sun's gonna lay all these back down and it will glue them down.